going to space was always a risk. But in the beginning of the Apollo program, the United States got a stark realization of just how dangerous its moon missions would be. The Apollo program almost ended before it even got off the ground. In the mid-1960s, NASA was working at breakneck speed, attempting to take another step towards President John F. Kennedy's goal to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Apollo program engineers were still focused on fulfilling the foundation for the project's objectives, establishing the technology to meet other national interests in space, achieving preeminence in space for the US, carrying out a program of scientific exploration of the moon, and developing man's capability to work in the lunar environment. By 1966, NASA upgraded its first multi-stage rocket, the Saturn I, to the more powerful Saturn IB. The top part of the rocket was where several major systems lived, including the Apollo spacecraft, known as the Command Service Module, or CSM. The command module was considered the mothership, with the goal of carrying the astronauts to space and then returning them safely to Earth. Inside were three compartments, including the sealed crew cabin, which only had about six cubic meters of space. With all the operational displays, crew couches, and equipment, there was very little room left over for the astronauts to maneuver. A prototype version of the spacecraft, the Apollo Block 1 CSM, would be the first to embark on a manned mission. NASA set the launch date for February 21, 1967. The purpose of the flight was to test launch operations, ground tracking and control facilities, and the performance of the Saturn 1B rocket and the CSM spacecraft. NASA selected two veterans and one rookie as the crew for the mission that was later dubbed Apollo 1. The command pilot, Gus Grissom, was no stranger to the stress of spaceflight. Grissom was one of the original Mercury pilots, and during the splashdown of his first mission, the capsule's hatch blew open, causing him to nearly drown. The senior pilot was Ed White, who was the first American to conduct a spacewalk during Project Gemini. This is the greatest experience I've ever under. And the pilot was Roger Chaffee, who at 31 would be the youngest American ever to go to space. He was added to the crew as a replacement after the original pilot dislocated his shoulder during training. Chaffee was known as a notoriously nice guy who was often teased by other astronauts for his admiration of Grissom and White. He saw the Apollo 1 mission as a way to prove himself worthy of the title of astronaut. Early on in their training, Grissom and the rest of the crew voiced concerns with the spacecraft, primarily with the amount of flammable material in the cabin. The astronauts jokingly presented this crew portrait to the Apollo spacecraft program office manager after he gave the spacecraft a passing grade. But the thing is, the astronauts weren't alone in their concerns. In fact, some experts believed the immense pressure of Kennedy's deadline forced NASA and the contractor North American Aviation to make decisions that sacrificed safety. One of the main concerns was NASA's decision to opt for a single gas environment inside the capsule over a dual gas environment because it required a lighter system. This meant that the Apollo spacecraft would use 100% oxygen in the crew cabin, so even a small spark could quickly turn into a blaze. Adding to that fear, other astronauts reported seeing what appeared to be frayed wires and short circuits in the cabin of the spacecraft. There were also issues with the decision to have the hatch open inward, and the fact that it didn't carry explosive bolts in the case of an emergency. NASA and North American Aviation made as many adjustments as possible, but in the interest of time, they decided to move forward with the February flight. One month before launch, the rocket and spacecraft were cleared for what was referred to as a plugs-out test. At 1 p.m. on January 27th, the Apollo 1 astronauts entered the command module, sealed the hatch, and prepared for what was considered a sort of dress rehearsal for the actual flight. There were problems from the start. First, there was a foul odor emanating from the oxygen tank. And then, there was an alarm triggered, indicating a high oxygen flow. To the frustration of the crew, static continually drowned communication with the control room. Now we gotta get to move. We can't talk between two or three buildings. 
At 6.31 p.m., the test conductors were ready to start the countdown. But seconds later, horror struck. A flash fire ripped through the spacecraft. The emergency escape procedure called for a minimum of 90 seconds, but it only took about 30 seconds for the flames and toxic smoke to engulf the crew cabin. Despite heroic efforts by NASA ground crews and controllers, it took a full five minutes to open the hatch. The deaths of Grissom, White, and Chaffee were a shocking wake-up call that caused many to question President Kennedy's deadline to put a man on the moon. All the progress NASA had made was blinded by tragedy. The investigation of the Apollo 1 fire forced a hold on the space program. The hard lessons learned from this mission would dictate new stringent checks and balances that would inform all NASA missions to follow ultimately changing the nation's path to the moon. There's a lot of history that led up to this point. So if you want to learn more about the start of the space race and NASA's first missions, check out this video. And make sure you subscribe to Seeker to follow the entire Apollo series. Thanks for watching.